Hello and welcome back. In 3.3 we get into quadratic functions and their properties. So first a basic setup for what a generic quadratic would look like. f of x is ax squared plus bx plus c. So a is non-zero, a, b, and c are in the set of real numbers, a is still non-zero. If a is worth zero, this is then a linear, ax squared gets knocked out, so a has to be non-zero. The domain of any quadratic function it <coughs> excuse me, is negative infinity to infinity. Uh, and you pick a real number, um, you can either write it up in interval or set builder. Uh, you pick a real number, you can plug it into a function f. That's a uh, quadratic. Uh, as far as directions that it, the parabola will open, up for a greater than zero, down a less than zero, a equals zero, we have a line. Also has what we refer to as an axis of symmetry. Sometimes also called the line of symmetry. So we'll start out with um, f x is 2x squared plus 12x plus 10. Uh, and we'll look at basically all of the properties of it. The vertex, so that's the highest or lowest point depending on uh, if we're opening down or opening up. Line of symmetry, also called axis of symmetry, and any intercepts. So we can do this by completing the square. Uh, that's a skill you're going to want to really hang on to. Um, all the math courses you're going to use, uh, have after this, um, at least in the uh, algebra, calculus, differential equations, based ones, you're going to use this quite a bit. So if you're still having trouble completing the square, now it's time to do a little practice. So the first thing I like to do is just sort of separate out the plus 10. So I'll keep the 2x squared, I'll keep the plus 12x, and I'm going to leave a little space here. Now we're not quite ready yet to complete the square. Notice our leading coefficient is not yet a 1, so we can fix that by factoring. And I'm just going to factor it from the first two terms. I'm going to leave a little bit of room in the parentheses there, I'm going to keep that plus 10 outside. Now I'm ready to complete the square. Uh, we'll use red for that guy. So half of 6 is 3. 3 squared is 9. But remember, this isn't really worth 9. If I distribute, this is really worth a plus 18. So that means I will have to have a minus 18 out here as well. So that way I've added something worth 0. 2 times positive 9 is positive 18. Positive 18 minus 18 is 0. We added 0. So then f of x is 2 by x plus 3 quantity squared minus 8. So if we were going to graph this, we know that we would stretch it, the basic x squared graph. Then we would shift it left and shift it down. So on the basic y equals x squared, the lowest point is at 0, 0. So that's the vertex of the original. And think what happened to that 0, 0 point. So it moved to the left by 3 and down by 8. So the vertex is at negative 3, negative 8. In other words, in quadrant 3. 
which direction this opens, A is greater than zero, so we're opening up. So right now I know two things. I know we're looking at a vertex in Q3 and that we're opening up, then automatically we do have a pair of x-intercepts. So if we had a vertex in Q3 and we were opening down, I wouldn't bother to look for x-intercepts. Uh, they'd come up as imaginary numbers. So we have our vertex, we have our direction, uh, our line of symmetry. This is going to be symmetric. Again, think of the original just basic y equals x squared graph. It's symmetric about the y-axis, which has an equation x equals 0. And we shifted it to the left 3, so the axis of symmetry is x equals negative 3. You do need both sides of that equation. Uh, negative 3 is not an axis of symmetry. x equals negative 3 is an axis of symmetry. As far as intercepts, um, the y-intercept is usually easier in the original. You just find f of 0, and the first couple terms are going to drop out on you. So f of 0 is 10. So 0, 10 is our y-intercept. As far as x-intercepts, the second version is usually much easier to use. Those happen when y is 0, so 0 is 2 by x plus 3 quantity squared minus 8. So we'll add 8 to both sides. 8 is 2 by x plus 3 quantity squared. We'll cut both sides in half, and 4 is x plus 3 quantity squared. We'll take the square root of both sides, plus or minus on the side with the constant. So plus or minus 2 is worth x plus 3, so x is negative 3 plus or minus 2. So negative 3 plus 2 is negative 1, so we have negative 1, 0. Negative 3 minus 2 is negative 5. We also have negative 5, 0. So that's one that turns out nice, neat, and pretty. They don't all turn out nice, neat, and pretty. This time we'll look at f of x is 2x squared minus 3x plus 3. All the same ideas. We want to uh, find the vertex, axis of symmetry, which direction it opens, and any intercepts that we have. So we're going to complete the square on this as well. So I'll do a little regrouping here. We'll factor whatever the leading coefficient is if it's not a 1, but we'll only do that from our first two terms. So then I want half of negative 3 halves. Let me do this kind of off to the side here. If we want half of that, we would multiply it by a half. That's equivalent to dividing by 2 over 1, multiplying by 1 over 2. So that is negative 3 fourths quantity squared. So 9 sixteenths is what we'll add to both sides. Or, uh, I'm sorry, not to both sides. We'll add the 9 sixteenths inside here. Remembering that we have our 2 out here, that is really worth 9 eighths. So this was really a plus 9 eighths, so I will subtract 9 eighths. So 3 is 24 eighths. So f of x is 2 by x minus uh, 3 fourths quantity squared plus 24 eighths minus 9 eighths and then just hit your like terms there. So f of x 2 by x minus 3 fourths quantity squared and then we have plus 15 eighths. So now we have both versions of our equation. That's plenty of info 
to find all of our requested information. So A is positive, so this opens up. Our vertex, again, just think of the zero, zero shifting. It shifted to the right three-fourths, and it shifted up 15 eighths. Your line of symmetry is kind of a freebie after that. X equals three-fourths. Uh, in uh, pre-calc, you'll get into then uh, what happens if we have parabolas opening left and right instead. Your line of symmetry could be a Y equals instead. So we're in quadrant one, and we're opening up. That means there are no x-intercepts. Y-intercept, f of zero. I'll go with the original version. Two by zero squared minus three by zero plus three f of 0 equals 3, so 0, 3 is your y-intercept. So the next thing they have us work on is how to find the equation given a vertex at one point. So we'll be given on this one a vertex of negative 2, positive 4. And we're told that the graph contains 5, 6. So on this one, I would recommend going with the version that we get when we complete the square. So let me flip this over and again kind of remind you what that would look like. So A was always out here and then left or right, up or down. So then we can plug in what we know. So uh, our Y value is a 6. We don't know the value of A yet. Our X value was a 5. And the graph was shifted to the left 2. It must mean there was a plus 2 inside. The graph was also, the vertex was shifted up 4. There must have been a plus 4 outside. So after that, we can just solve for A. And then we have our F of X our function. So 6 is worth a by 7 squared plus 4. So 2 is worth 49a. So a is 2 49ths. So then f of x is 2 49ths of x plus 2 quantity squared plus 4. So we still want to show the reader where the vertex went. To the left 2 and up 4. Occasionally, they'll also ask us to work this through given just any three arbitrary points. In that case, we don't get to go with this nice, neat, pretty version. We go with the original AX squared plus BX plus C version. So if we're just told that the graph contains negative 1, 4, 1, 10, and 3, 20, We're going to have to use f of x is a times x squared plus b times x plus c. So our first one, f of x is 4. We don't know a's value, but we know x is negative 1. We don't know b's value, we know x is negative 1. 
and we don't know C's value. We can do a, just a little bit of cleanup there. Negative one quantity squared is one. So we can say four is worth A minus B plus C. We can do that with the other points as well. So then 10 is equal to A times one squared plus B times one plus C. So 10 is worth A plus B plus C. And we can do that with the 320. So 20 is worth A by 9. So that's our 3 squared plus B times 3 plus C. So 20 is worth 9A plus 3B plus C. And it looks like the B's would be easiest to knock out of our equations. So we'll just label these as 1, 2, and 3. So 1 plus 2. We have A minus B plus C is 4. Together with A plus B plus C is 10. So we get 2A, B's drop out, plus 2C is worth 14, or A plus C equals 7. Then I want to use a different combination to knock out the B's as well. I'm going to try and keep this all on to a single page. So I'll use equation 1, but I'll multiply both sides by 3. So 3 times equation number 1, and I'll keep equation 3 as is. So 3 by 4, 12. Right hand side, 3A minus 3B plus 3C. Equation 3 as is, 20 is worth 9A plus 3B plus C. So we get 32 is worth 12A plus 4C. And that one I can divide both sides through by 4. So 8 is 3A plus C. And we can just solve that little system there. Um, so let's see, it looks like the C's would be easiest to drop. So I'll keep my 3a plus c equals 8, and I'll subtract the a, the c, and the 7. So 2a is worth 1, a is a half. And then you can just use that to work your way up the line. So a plus c is 7, so half plus c is 7. So c is 6 and a half. And we can get our b out of that as well. 10 is worth a 1 half plus b plus c 6 and a half. So 10 is equal to b plus 7. b is 3. So then our function f of x is equal to ax squared half x squared plus bx plus 3x plus c. Our c value was the 6 and a half. So a little bit messier if you have, if you have just three arbitrary points and not a vertex and one point. Uh, you have to do a little bit of elimination on a 3 by 3. Alright, uh, so in section 3.3, three, uh, I would recommend trying uh, 1 through 20, 21 to 61 every other odd, and 75 to 83 odd, and 89. If you have any questions, please get in touch, otherwise I'll see you next time.